What's up guys, Paul Salmon here. Going to talk to you about some interventions that you need to make if you suspect that you're experiencing carbon monoxide poisoning. And that's coming up next. Okay guys, so if you go back to when you were first learning how to fly and you were studying for your written, they drilled it into your head about carbon monoxide poisoning. And the two interventions that you always wanted to make were, number one, turn off the heat source. We're going to talk about why, and I'm going to show you some specific examples of some uh, heat sources that would entrain uh, carbon monoxide and get you in trouble here in just a bit. And then the second one uh, was to always open your vents. And that was on every uh, resource that you can see, it was just drilled in your head. Turn off the heat, open the vents. Well, there's two additional uh, interventions that you need to make. If you think you're, you know, either you think you're being affected by carbon dioxide poisoning, or you know that you're being affected by carbon dioxide poisoning because you've got a detector on board the aircraft. Again, we'll talk more about detectors here in just a second. And those two interventions are, number one, you should descend to the lowest practical altitude. Now, that doesn't mean go buzz along the ground at 25 feet off the ground, but you should descend to the lowest practical altitude. I'll talk about why here in just a second. And the second thing is, if your aircraft is equipped with oxygen system, put oxygen on and turn that oxygen up to the highest flow and concentration that you can achieve with whatever system you have available to you. So if you're brought into the emergency department uh, showing the effects of carbon dioxide poisoning, basically our one goal is to get you as oxygenated as possible. We try to deliver the highest concentration of oxygen at the greatest, sometimes greatest pressure as well to try to knock that uh, carbon monoxide off the hemoglobin molecule so it can start carrying oxygen again and, and uh, delivering oxygen to the tissues. So you guys probably all remember that uh, when you were doing your studying that the atmospheric pressure at the surface is 29.92 inches of mercury. When you go up to 10,000 feet, that decreases all the way down to about 20 and a half inches uh, of mercury. And that is a significant, about 30% decrease in the amount of atmospheric pressure. Uh, if you're able to descend from 10,000 feet right back down to about 3,000 feet, instead of being a 30% reduction in pressure, it's only about a 10% reduction in pressure. And that can make a big difference on uh, increasing oxygenation. Again, you want to put uh, the highest flow of oxygen available, even if it's just two liters or three or whatever you have, put that oxygen on. Get down to the lowest practical altitude and uh, get you some supplemental oxygen on it. So let's look at how uh, carbon dioxide can get entrained uh, uh, via the heating system. So the heat system on most of the helicopters and light airplanes are literally, it's a, a hollow can that's built around the muffler and we circulate air through that hollow space and into the, and that warms it and then that's introduced into the cabin. If you had a crack in the muffler, it can entrain uh, exhaust directly into that hollow air space and, and right on into the cabin and uh, can cause problems. So let's take a look at an example of a, a muffler that had some problems that we discovered on a, a, a helicopter here recently. You a muffler that uh, kind of came apart here. Let's see how it's that might cause problems. <laughs> Again, that can occur if you were to go too far during your mag check and shut the engine off and then click right back over to the, uh, and excite the mags and the engine fires off. It can have residual fuel um, vapors in the exhaust and those light off and blow the muffler apart. You hear a loud backfire and blow the muffler apart. So the most common symptom that you're gonna see with carbon dioxide poisoning is a headache. And generally the headache usually correlates pretty well, the severity of the headache correlates pretty well with the severity of the carbon dioxide poisoning. Now never say never, but I've never seen a patient with carbon dioxide poisoning that did not have a significant headache. All right? As time goes on, carbon dioxide poisoning gets worse and worse. You can become lethargic and all of that. But one of the earliest symptoms that you're going to see and likely one of the earliest symptoms that you as the 
the victim is going to recognize is the fact that you're going to usually have a headache. Now, it is possible not to recognize carbon monoxide in its early stages and for it to advance and uh, to the point where you may become unconscious and lose control of the aircraft. And that makes it even that much more important to have a carbon monoxide detector on board the aircraft. So let's talk a little bit about carbon monoxide detectors. Uh, as luck would have it, the Robinson helicopters have always had carbon monoxide detectors uh, uh, on the panel uh, of the aircraft, which is quite nice. And as time goes by, uh, more and more aircraft are coming out with a carbon monoxide detector that's panel mounted uh, from the factory, or at least as an option. If you have an older aircraft that did not come out with one, you've got several options available to you. So starting with the most affordable of your options, uh, these little CO2 detectors that uh, basically get stuck up on the panel there and they show a color change when they're exposed to carbon monoxide. Uh, these things are only about five to seven dollars are available from just about everywhere, Sporty, Sky Geek, a lot of other places there. So this is a very, very affordable option. It's certainly better than nothing, <laughs> that's for sure. Okay. Uh, working on up the chain, the electrochemical uh, detectors have shown to be a lot more accurate and uh, they can go uh, from fairly affordable. This first option here is about, oh, I think about $80. And, uh, and how much money you want to spend will determine how sophisticated a detector that you get. They pretty much all have a readout um, that shows the exact uh, level of carbon monoxide, which is uh, very good to know. And uh, some of them have audible alarms and lights that go off and all sorts of things. But, you know, they, they start at about $80 for the cheapest model and go to several hundred dollars for the most expensive. It's like everything else in life. Uh, how much money you want to spend determines out how much uh, sophistication you get in your carbon monoxide detector. But certainly all the electrochemical ones are shown to be a lot more accurate than just the color change shown on the little $5 detector. So when I showed you the picture of the muffler that had actually been blown apart, uh, backfiring is a common reason to sustain damage to your muffler, backfiring for any reason. A very common cause of backfiring is that when people will do their mag check, they'll go too far and actually shut the engine down and then rapidly uh, click back over and excite the mag again. That leaves residual fuel uh, vapors within the exhaust and when it fires off again, a lot of times it will backfire and that can produce a lot of damage to the inside of your muffler uh, and uh, produce a problem with carbon monoxide leaking into the, or exhaust leaking into the heating system. Okay, so in a review, if you think you're being, either you think you are or know that you are being affected by carbon monoxide poison because you've got a CO2 detector, four things you wanna do, not just two, four things. Number one, turn off the heat source. Number two, uh, go ahead and open those vents up, all right? Number three, to send down to the lowest practical altitude. And number four, if you have the ability to put on supplemental oxygen, put it on. All right? So one, two, three, four. Those are the four things you need to do. Okay, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next video.